All right, guys, welcome to episode four, Music World. Uh, this week is Andorra, and I, you can probably hear us right now. It sounds like we're in a cathedral. We're in a cathedral, boy. No, nah, I'm just kidding. We're not in a cathedral. <laughs> we just got effects out the waz. Um, anything y'all want to say while we got the reverb? Because I'm going to turn it off in a second. Echo. <laughs> You're a loser. <laughs> er, I'm a loser. You're a loser. Anybody name that movie? No. Nah. The Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> nah. The effects are going off. Effects. N- no more. All right. So, again, welcome to Music World Episode 4. This week's country is Andorra. Andorra, boy. So, Andorra is in between Spain and France. Isn't it really small? It's a tiny country. It's, it's in the Pyrenees Mountains. 86,000 people. If you watched the end of last episode, you uh, already know that information. But if you didn't, welcome. And uh, we're going to get right into it. I've got the Andorran National Anthem queued up. You're going to hear that word a lot. We had a debate over that before we sat down. Do you call it Andorran? Do you call it Andorian? And we looked it up, and we believe that Andorran is the correct uh, pronunciation. Can you guys confirm that? Yeah, yeah, that's what I found, too. Andorian. No, Andorran. It's Andorran. Andorran. Mm. Andorran. Like I said, we're going to go over a bit of the uh, history of Andorra. Andorran uh, music and dance. Um, so the, the national uh, language of Andorra is uh, Catalan. Um, and so um, I'm reading off a document. It's, it's from a website called worldlyrise.blogspot.com. Um, really great article. I actually got a couple of my artists from this um, article. So this opens up with most Andorran folk music is related to both Catalan and French music um, with obvious reasons, of course, um, as it's situated right between Spain and France. Um, However, its music is related to two dances that are Andorran in origin. Um, The music usually contains a shawm and a flabiole, as well as other instruments. A shawm is related to an oboe, so very long uh, wind instrument. Um, and a flabiole is a smaller woodwind instrument in the flute family that's uh, playing to the front of the f- performer. So we're going to move down here to my first song, which is a gentleman named Enrique Granados. So the song that I found is actually a... He was a uh, 20th century composer from Andorra. This piece is performed by someone else, but it's his written uh, music. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So that was Enrique Granados. Uh, the song was called Valses Poeticos Number no. 3. Um, I love how this song changes halfway through to something completely different. It kind of mm-hmm. opens up a little, a little hopeful, warm. It was so beautiful. Did you hear that, Jacob? Yeah, yeah. It, um, yeah, I forget what that's called, but like um, classical pieces that have like sort of an, an A section and a B section. Um, and I yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but that was really cool. Yeah, so it started really, it, it felt to me very much like a story. 
It, it felt had sad or long. It had two for sections. A bit. Yeah, it was kind of like a darker time, longing or looking back, and then boom, that that change to that B section that you mentioned. It just was. It fit so well. It sounded like the same thing, but total like rebirth. You know, it was yeah gorgeous. It went from these very minor chords to on in on a dime. It it flipped to major, and to these beautiful. Um, just really heartfelt chords, and that's what I lo- liked about it so much was that when you when you come into it and you hear the int- intro, you assume it's going to stay that way. You assume it's going to be sad, and 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 that's all right. But when it flips it, you're just like, wow, that that I think that was a really nice um, movement to to a completely different emotion. Incredibly beautiful. In fact, I I like to hear Jacob talk about it more just because. I started playing uh, the piano and the keys just recently, and he's been kind of uh, tossing me tidbits and you know advice and whatnot. So he's a, he's a little bit more experienced. I'd love to hear some more about it. Um, yeah, I'd have to have to listen to it again to give a, a thorough um, input on it. But um, I really liked how not only did uh, not only did it just switch from minor to major chords in the beginning and when it was long and and, uh longing it it was you know it it was just that the notes were uh what's the what's the right word you've we've got like staccato and legato legato Legato. there we go the beginning was was very legato and it didn't go to straight staccato but it got a little bit more punchy and didn't didn't wait as long it was like i don't know maybe the the major threes were kind of like popping when it went happening to the majors. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, no, I, I think the the reason I chose this song was because it's I think it's kind of a it's kinda of, we're moving a, a little bit away from what we're usually hearing. You know, we've hear we've heard um guitars and bands and we've heard um you know, in some sense some electronic music and I, I like the idea that somebody is performing somebody else has written music from the 20th century. I thought that was a really nice um, movement away from the usual. Um, So the next song I'm going to hand over to Jacob. Um, If you'd like to tell me what that is, I'll go ahead and cue it up. Okay. Um, The dude's name is uh, Nick uh, Nick Gain, and the song is called... Yeah, um, and the the song's called uh, Born in the 80s. Um, And he is in... um, Let's see, a rock slash um, EDM producer, and um, he got his start at the age of 18 in an um, anonymous punk band called Anonymous, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty dope. It's, it's like my new favorite song. <laughs> so I'm going to say something about this guy um, after we, after we uh, listen to it, but the fact that you just said Anonymous is going to play so well into what I'm going to play later, so... Let's go ahead and take a listen to Nick Gain, Born in the 80s.
so yeah, I, I don't know if that song was uh, meant to be a joke or, or not, but um, you know, I thought it was, elements of it were, were extremely badass, and um, other elements were were uh, pretty silly. That's, but, um, that's exactly how I felt like when it first start, first minute and a half, I couldn't take it serious, but then there'd be like some really cool production. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're like, damn it. it it's, I, it's really bad. It's it's pretty, it's, pretty it's very bad. bad. Yeah. So I want to bring light before we really start to dive into it. W- Jacob, what did you say about this guy before we listen to the song? Um, he is from a let's see. He's from a band called Anonymous, um, which was a a punk band that I believe like won some awards, um, like some European awards. Um, uh, and let's see. I'm trying to remember what else I remember. So, so this group uh, was called Anonymous, the the group that he was in. Mm-hmm. So, it's so funny that you found this guy Nick Nick Gaines or Nick Gain. Uh, Nick Gain, yeah. Nick Gain. Um, born in the 1980s. He he might have been born in the 1980s, <laughs> but the, the what I'm getting at is, I one of my next songs, um, after James is a song by a band called Anonymous. And I believe I, I'm not going to guess the year. I'll, I'll look at it when it comes up. But they were a pop punk band from Andorra, and it's just so funny. It's such a small country. They're probably the same. Oh, it's definitely no. It's definitely the same. Um, oh but but I think it's really interesting because we get to see a progression of this artist, and then we're going to get to see what he did. <laughs> God, I Before. hope it was better than <laughs> that. Oh, um, t- it's worse. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's pop punk. I mean, it's pop punk from the 2000s. As long as you understand. Um, Were you in a pop punk band? I was in a pop punk yeah, band. That and was my I can, first band, too. God damn. I can um, <laughs> legitimately <laughs> say, school. you know, that's, you know, some people, you know, just have some missteps in life. <laughs> pop punk was definitely one. <laughs> pop punk is like skateboarding for kids in Virginia. It's like. You kind of have to do it. You quit <laughs> after you can't do anything other than like an ollie and a kickflip. You're like, I can kind of heel flip, but you know this is going anywhere. I'm, I'm not going to be that kid. My who parents brought bro. me the skateboard. <laughs> Regardless, um, my thoughts on the song: the percussion, the kick drums, and the the percussion in this song is really strong, and that's what captured me uh, right off the top. Um, the kicks are really like perfectly compressed and just have a really good sound to them. Yeah, and that, like uh, the vocoder Daft Punk sounding. Part, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and he actually kind of I connected with one of the verses when he was talking about riding the schools and the BC Boys was like, "Damn it, he got me." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I really think um, this is such a it's such an interesting record because you can see him doing his best English accent. And you can kind of see it. You can kind of hear it breaking a little bit, um, and it's kind of goofy because it's a European guy doing an, uh, an American accent. But um, really good English. Hats off to this guy for being able to put all that together. Um, and it's funny because the chorus of the anonymous song that I'm going to play. Let's go straight to the anonymous is, song. Let's go back to back. All right, we will. the The chorus is in English, but the rest of the song is in. Um, I, I want to say it's Catalan, but I could be wrong. Um, so I just think it's funny how they switch that because it's not often in, you know, music, especially from the U.S. that they start in English and then and then go to another language. We'll get it with Spanish every once in a while. You um, get Spanish, and that's it's definitely rare. Yeah, I mean it's kind of our culture too. And yeah. It's like, hmm, hmm, we're so America. So let me pull this up and and we'll go from there. So um, the song next we're gonna play is a band called Anonymous. This is from um, that I believe it's a channel or a TV station called Eurovision from 2007. So this is probably eight, nine, ten years before the last song. The song is called Salvam El Elman. Um, and if you if you can find this, if you can sit down and, and look up this video, the band is called Anonymous Salvam Elman, and it's a pop punk group with Nick Gain in it from the last artist. Let's take a listen. que ya no volviste es que no prestas pensar en si vius bé y no ya te lo de me supone yo que no pare todo este me acuerdo poder fe podemos unirnos pero ve reflexiona tu mate tu mate Down, not 
Exactly. So this is um, this is anonymous Salvon Elmon. Um, this is yeah. This is just newfound glory from 2007. I mean, it's it's straight f- formula, but because of that, the first 30 seconds had like some nostalgia for me. So I connected with it more. I was enjoying it more. But then it it liter- it hit a wall, and I had to tell you turn it off. I can't, when he, they started like overdubbing the chorus at the end, I was like, I cannot make it through this. So it rips my hair So if, if, if you do listen to this song on your own and you get to the end of it, they they do a bridge part where he sings in English and then a big guitar. And then, and then, and then, and then the they go into the, cl- the, the classic um, key change. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, um, which was just like, they're just, they're, and They're ticking off all the, the top 40 boxes. Is that where I cut the line? I was like, nope, can't do it. Well, I think it was all just like, all right, we've, got, we've gotten to the end of this song. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts, Jacob? Uh, seeing Nick Gaines in his early years, 10 years ago. Um, I, liked, uh, I liked how he used both his na- native language and um, some English in there. That was, that was interesting. That's a um, I read that he, um, he likes to... Um, put his music up for free online and like um his and and like produces everything himself like when he his all his solo music and so considering like you know what we listened to earlier um born in the 80s like i feel like he, he came a long way i want to i want to just say hats off to nick gain for uh traversing and graduating if not evolving <laughs> from pop punk to where he is now he's clearly doing pretty well um you know, I thought that was just a fun song, and all the comments were just like, man, I remember this. On being on Eurovision, this was yeah. the best song that was ever on Eurovision. Every every middle schooler listened to that in that country for at least a week. It's so positive, and, and the music video is such a timepiece. I mean, I, I, I beg you, viewers, I beg definitely you, born in the 80s. please watch this video. He's um, definitely born in the 80s after watching that video. After watching that, he's a total pop punk head, dude. Yeah. Um, so... Who wants to go next, James? So, the next song is called Asturias. It's by Isaac Albanese. Albanese? I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but you said you found this on some article or something? Yeah, it was, I was reading something about uh, guitarists. I was trying to um, find something other than like metal or punk because, believe it or not, um, when my friends and I were researching this country, there's a lot of metal and punk coming out of there. But regardless, uh, so we found something a little bit more uh, complex. It's a guitarist, and he's supposed to be masterful. Full of Great. mastery. Let's give it a listen. Again, this is Isaac Albanez. The song is called Asturias. <laughs>
Holy shit, James. Bring in the fucking heat, boy. <laughs> Damn. Talk Damn. about a master picker. That was crazy. Now, could you actually see the technique that we were trying to replicate, you know, playing the air guitar? Yeah. Could you see that he was going up? I could see. Could. So what he was doing is he, he's he's on the bottom three or four, bottom three, with his thumbs and his, and his uh, pointer in the middle. And then he would pull up. He would, he would go, boom. See, that's interesting because when I was listening to it, for some reason, my mind was saying, like, it's like a flail out, which is, it's cool, like, hearing it and and seeing it the opposite way than you perceive it. Yeah. The, um, I think what it what, what it is is that if he goes to come back up and down, he's traveling. And that, right. that, that'll keep him off beat. Or that'll kick him off beat. It because was just so, such a contrasting sound. Like, the, the up has that, like, tone. I don't know. It was amazing. I mean, he is. If you like Andy McKee, if you like Antoine Dufour, um, if you like anyone on that record label, this is a guy that you would like. Um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, go to YouTube, type in Andy McKee. The song's called Drifting. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. Jacob, do you know what type of chords he was doing when he, he like, did that change and opened up? And it was like. Dum. What type of chords were those? They were distinctly different than most of everything else he was doing. Um, I think he may have migrated like from uh, more of like a minor mode to like to uh, to major. I think at some point during the song, um, he was doing this beautiful thing where he would play the the um, harmonies on top of notes and make that really almost Egyptian sounding yeah. um, like chord. Uh, st- structure. Mm. I think that's the area I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh man, that was so cool. There's so was, many different little little intricacies. It was so in the song. rich, like the tone of it was just wow. That, yeah. I can only say good things about that song. I mean, right now, uh, I think James is in the lead with the best song. Um, <laughs> so there, there's another. So we're moving forward. Nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. Uh, <laughs> I have to cut this out. Um, all of it <laughs> just the whole thing so it's be like welcome to music world songs yeah just to go straight to the song <laughs> welcome to music end um, so Jacob and I both I found knew, I knew it was gonna go bad once we started with the reverb <laughs> dude that reverb's fucking dope boy <laughs> dope boy shit is fucking dope boy boomtastic Need a grid. <laughs> All right, let's let's rein it back in. So, when I when I came and met these guys this afternoon, I asked them, you know, what kind of artists you have? Do we have any of the same ones? That's something we like to do um, in the event that we have the same overlapping one. And in this case, Jacob and I did have an overlap. Um, this is not this has happened before. Has happened in episode one, also in episode three, um, with uh, let's see the first one was Ahmad Zahir. Afghanistan, huge, huh? He's he's the Elvis of Afghanistan. If you don't know who that is, go ahead and uh, jump back to episode one. Yeah, Charm and Fall. Really, really awesome. Uh, episode three, we had Cheb Azadine, who um, Tanner and I both um, found songs for, and and he had his music outlawed in in Algeria. So go ahead and check that out, episode three. But in this one, there's a metal band from Andorra that is pretty like extremely popular especially in the u.s um and i can only imagine even more in their own country but the the band i believe is called persephone yeah yeah um yeah they're like a progressive death metal band um with uh yeah so they recent they, not recently but so yeah <laughs> during this year they put out a um new album called athma which I think is funny because it sounds like somebody with a lisp saying asthma. All it's spelled A A T H M A. I hate the name. All I thought was math. I just th- like I think of Mike Tyson saying Do I have asthma. Anything positive to say about this, this stuff yet? Oh man, I'm a Debbie Downer anyway. So I'm gonna play um, the second song off of their record. This is not too over over jarring, if you will, or overbearing. Um, it's only a minute and twenty eight seconds. The song is called One of Many. Um, Kind of instrumental. It it comes straight off of the um, t- uh, the intro track, 
Um, but I thought just a really cool song. And if you, and if you want to venture forward and and listen to the third track, Prison Skin, really awesome, awesome song off their new album. But I'm gonna go ahead and and, and cue this up, and we're gonna take a listen. This is Persephone, one of many. So this was Persephone, one of many. I think this song is so is so great because you get a little bit of everything. You get this technical death metal. You get a really nice piano portion, and then and then the, the grooves on uh, three quarters of the way in, they they go from a halftime to like um, speeding up randomly, but it's within the same tempo. So it it really tricks your mind. It does. I love this. I really love this. Like, really curious what you guys have to say. Yeah, um, I like their drummer a lot. Like he uh, doesn't overdo it, like a lot of um, death metal drummers do. You know, exactly. like just with the double kick drum, like he, he knows how to space it out. Um, and the pianist, that was that was freaking Gorgeous. awesome. Gorgeous. Yeah, Gorgeous. it was uh, it was a great change in uh, dynamics. And I really like the drummer's tom work. It was like he did these like tom rolls, tom fill type of things that were just it was like. Like dipping down, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I think everybody is not being, is, they're not trying to show off. They're 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 filling they're their picking spot. The right spots. They're exactly. picking great there was, spots. There's space for us to interpret it. And, and it's not just driving blast beats like, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's done well, but thank God there's no screaming. Yeah, well there is if you move on to the rest of the album, but this was an instrumental portion and. Gosh, I love this so much. I I, I I listened to this album. I listened to a song or two. I immediately downloaded it. I said, I need this album. I need to listen to it. Um, so I feel really good about that. So I think that's a great one to end on. A little, right. little short episode today. Um, this has been Music World uh, Episode 4, Andorra. Thank you for traveling the world with us. I like that. <laughs> I, like, I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you for traveling the world's airwaves. Uh, uh. Traveling uh, the nitty gritty. Mm, I'm going to butter your bread. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Good> again, <laughs> again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, let's take a li- look at what's going to be next week. Let's Before take you take those head, I'll take a lick. Let's take a look. Let's take a leak of the look. Of the let's thing. take a look. Let's lick the look of the leak. So, what? where are we? Where are we? Okay. <laughs> just gets better and better. All right. This is, so this has been definitely the most shit show. Uh, I know, right? Like I'm like, gonna have such a fucking like, awful time that's editing. That's literally what I was thinking. It's like you're gonna be having fun editing this one, I know, boy. It's gonna be just like cut, 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 cut. <laughs> small um, city for a small country. That's yeah, right. So this week uh, has been Andorra. Can't cut that Next up out. is Angola. Now, let's do a little research real quick before we close the episode. Where is Angola? Because I'll be honest, I have no idea. Let's guess. Which continent? I just, I just looked, so you can guess. Go ahead. No, no, no. I want to hear your guess. If you had to guess. Africa. My favorite country. But guess something else. Your favorite continent? 
Oh, I missed the question. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite gun. Where do you think Angola is? Oh, um. You can double up on Africa if you want. <laughs> if you yeah, had to guess. Probably. Or actually, no, I'm going to say Asia. Asia. Yeah. So, Angola is a Southern African nation. Bada bing, bada boom, boy, yeah. Um, it is in uh, Central Africa. It's at the. Um, it's more southern. That's why Z- uh, Zambia. Zambia. Zimbabwe. Zambia. Zambia. And then Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, and the Congo. Population twenty eight million. Official language Portuguese. Ooh. So it's gonna be fun. Yeah. It's gonna be really fun. I wonder if we'll see any like Brazilian bossa nova influences I hope because so. South Africa can yeah. be very. Um, very westernized. Totally. Um, so, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is concluding Music World Episode 4, Andorra. Um, if you'd like to uh, speak to us, we have an, uh, an email and a Twitter. The email is musicworldpodcast at gmail.com. The Twitter is at musicworldpod. We're also on SoundCloud. We're on YouTube, if you're watching that there. Subscribe. How you doing? And Hashtag if you're on Music iTunes. Music World Podcast what? Hashtag Music World Podcast. Yeah, I did the first one today. And so, you know, if you want to reach out to us, go ahead. If you're on iTunes, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Leave a review. If you're on uh, Twitter, go ahead and follow. And if you're on SoundCloud, you can follow. And if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe. So leave a comment if you want. Thanks so much for for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time.